Hi and welcome. We are at Helen Yunker's 95th birthday party. Helen turned 95 a couple of weeks ago on September 3rd. As the story goes, Helen, why was it September 3rd? Your mom? Mom picked it out and it was Labor Day. So That's kind of an inside uh, joke, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and, and one of my corny jokes is that on the way here, we went by the hospital and they were all picketing in the hospital. And I stopped and I asked them, what are you doing? Uh, they says, well, there's uh, labor trouble in the maternity ward. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice, Bob. Good choice. Well, this is a very special occasion. We're at the Ventura County Museum honoring Helen today for her birthday. And we will be interviewing people throughout the evening. But right now, we're interviewing our number one host and guest, which is Helen Younger. So Helen, when did you move to Ventura? How old were you? Uh, I moved here in 1958. Okay, so you yeah. were an adult when you moved here. Yeah. Why did uh, you move to Ventura? Why, what motivated you? Well, I, I was in selling, and I sold. Uh, I put on cookware programs, you know, and then the, the, then I get the people's names and that, and I go out and I sell, I sell them a, a wonderful set of cookware that was waterless. See? And, uh, and then I also, uh, one of my things I sold was a baby chair that made 13 different things. And I must have put a thousand of those things in Bakersfield. My I God. remember those. Yeah. So you moved to Bakersfield before Ventura. Yeah, I was there for, was it uh, seven and a half years? I was there during the earthquake of oh. 1952. The Hatchapi. Yeah, the, the Tehashby earthquake, and it was 8.2. Uh, that was a really big earthquake. Well, you know, they uh, all the people there had swimming pools because it's so oh, hot, you know. Right. So, and it dumped the water out of the swimming pools. My God. Can so you believe that? And the statues in the church walked off their stands. Oh, off the pedestals? They fell? Uh, yeah, they were, uh-huh. And we, we'd go to mass out underneath the trees that, oh. that were there. Uh, well, I would understand yeah. that. So now, now when there's a little shake and they say, <gasps> four point something or five, I say, hey, I've been there. They're worse. Yeah, so that's nothing to withstand. What it, brought you to Ventura? When I sold cookware, uh, my p sales manager and his wife lived in uh, Ventura. Okay. So I happened to come here in my job. And so they, you fell in love with the town? Yeah, and I, th I, and, and I my philosophy was if you're going to live in California live at the ocean you were right see and that's what uh, that brought me especially here. from Chicago with from, all the humidity well, and, and cold and not only that the um, uh, snow and oh, the ice brutal. and the cold off you know. Lake Michigan yeah. I remember that as a oh kid. my god when I used to I used, oh and I sold typewriters for <laughs> Remington Rand no and, kidding and I had a, a, my, my territory was Michigan Avenue Oh, and I wow. used to go in those high rises and I call on the offices and sell them a typewriter and this and that and the other. I day. bet you were a great salesperson. I was, and I worked with Elga El Corey. Nobody will remember her, but no, she, who was she? she was the world's fastest typist. No kidding. Uh -huh, and I, I, I typed over 100 words a minute. Oh my God. Yeah, at the time. Yeah. So you could demonstrate it as uh, well as sell it. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I mean uh, it was a noiseless typewriter, it was one of the first. In fact, they made a movie out of it, and there was some blonde, some dizzy blonde, maybe. <laughs> like Anne Southern? <laughs> yeah, no. I helped with the production of that film. No kidding. Because it, it was the, f uh, the first typewriter that was used in an office. Wow. Like that. Yeah, yeah. When I, my memories of it are not real great, but uh, I, I, I was the only woman on the staff. So I have, there's a, a, a picture of me with about was it eight men or something like that and it's, it's here today i have it in the display i like the odds yeah and i was the only woman on it so i broke the old ceiling for the women the glass ceiling you yeah. were the original so, yeah uh -huh. Love you, Alan. We're so glad we've gotten to know you. We're so glad we met you. Yeah, we did. We had so much fun together. What do you think? Yeah, I have wonderful birthday parties. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful birthday parties. Yeah. 
<laughs> continue to have them. We want you to get to be 100 plus. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you, Daddy and Bernie. Ventura County. My name's Elena Brokaw. I'm the acting director here at the museum. So happy to have you. This is a party about one person. One person. So we have to stop everybody so that we can all talk about that one person who is Helen Yunker. By the way, I'm here with Dottie and Bernie Novak, friends of Helen for a long time. How long have you guys been friends with Helen? Well, we really got to know her well in, in when Rubicon started around 1996. 20 years, but we've been really inseparable really? since then. We see her for everything. It's only 20 years. Helen was only a young 75 then. And you were kids. They're still, uh, see, we to me, I've her. known you guys for longer, and you always have been kids to me well, still, yeah, because but, you don't think old. I, I think that's I, a secret, Bernie. You're talking about web design. I think here? you have to stay young in order to think young and feel young, and yeah, I think and you're recognize right. the changes of what's happening in the world. Don't well, let us tell you about the trip to Winnipeg with Helen. That's okay, the, let, yeah, I want to hear about this because I never knew this happened. Well, the Rubicon had a, a deal with another theater up in Winnipeg, and they our show. I forgot what show it was now, but it sent up to Winnipeg and they accept it. And they have a beautiful theater up in Winnipeg. It seated like six or 800 people. We went to Winnipeg and we had so much fun with Helen. We were staying very close. We were with her every day. And she had so much, she just was an adorable person to be with, lovely, witty, and she loved to go into the thrift shops. And when in Winnipeg, we went, Dottie will tell you about that. Okay, Dottie, so what's the thrift shops? Oh, she Saga. loved it. What do you know? What would you buy? Jewelry. <laughs> she was full of vim and vigor. She still walked. Is, she Daddy. walked. She walked. She ran. She went. Visited. Wanted to see I everything. Every place. I don't know how you keep up with her. She's 95 and she's still running. I mean, she really is. She's extremely active. And but I think the thing about Helen that was fascinating to me is how generous. And this goes for both of you too. And Barbara Meister. People like you people are going away. You're generous with your time, your talent, and your resources to make the city of Ventura a better place. You've always been that way, as long as I've known you. And I've known you long, a long time. You're generous because you want to see it continue. Hello. You know, and you got away. someone else waiting, and we're gonna, oh, we're gonna we're, thank okay. you for your interview, and we're gonna go to the party. I love you both. I love you both. I love you both. So first of all, I'd like to really thank John Orr, President of the Board of the Museum of Ventura County. Thank you, Elena. For those of you who haven't yet had the pleasure of seeing Helen in her outfit tonight, you have missed something and you need to pay particular attention. Helen, you look magnificent. To paraphrase um, the neighbor, uh, the, the person at the neighboring table in When Harry Met Sally, uh, I'll have what Helen's having. She looks great at 95, tremendous. Congratulations. The museum welcomes you. Thank you very much for coming to honor Ellen. She has been a remarkable supporter for many, many years, and uh, citizens like Helen are uh, deserve tribute and praise and thank yous from all of us. Uh, with her request to the museum, she, we will establish the Helen M. Younger Fund for the preservation conservation and presentation 
of the collections of the Museum of Ventura County. A wonderful vote of confidence about our importance in the future life of the county. With our dedication of the Helen M. Younger alcove tonight, a wonderful vote of confidence in the importance of the museum today, and we thank you ever so much, Helen. So you got to Ventura when you got here in that, what year was that? 50? 1958. Okay, so Ventura in 58 was pretty much a small, small town. Yeah, it was uh, 25,000. Oh my God, See, today that, it's 110. Yeah, now it's, I, I think, almost even more than that. You so know, did so. you move, where did you move to in town when you moved to Ventura, did you? Uh, well, I rented a house down on Camden Lane. Down in, in Pierpont? In, in Pierpont. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it was a furnished house, and I was, I was able to bring my dog Susie with me. And, uh, uh, and eventually I started, you know, I, I bought down at the beach. And then, of course, I got my real estate license. And, uh, uh, well, I just, uh, that was my career, did selling. You how did you start getting, because I know you're real estate investing, uh, and it was mostly in Pierpont, correct? Yeah. How much were the, do you happen to remember how much the original homes were in Pierpont going for in 58? They were going for about $8,000. Okay. You could buy anything down there, even oceanfront for 10. That, and today? And it, today is, there are millions. millions. Uh -huh. So did you uh, start buying up these homes? Oh no, I didn't know that this was happening. I mean, I, it was part of my job to know what was going on in the area. And uh, I, I, I bought a, a few things. In fact, I built a beautiful fourplex right down uh, where the, uh, um, uh, the park starts. Right. right. At the end of Pier Park. Right. Oh, those are yours? Not anymore. I, well, there's a couple of them down Luckily, I sold there. them. <laughs> okay, uh, so then did you start investing more in real estate? Uh, no, I... Uh, because no. I know you had a real estate, bill, you had a business down there. Oh, yeah, I, I built an office and it took me I don't know how long to get it built because one of the um, uh, inhabitants down there didn't want, he, had, he owned the motel next to the corner lot that I bought. Right, correct. And uh, to buy, to build an office. And he told me, Helen, you're never going to have an office there because he didn't want me to, buy, to build on it. He wanted to get the lot and enlarge his parking area oh, and all. I'm kidding. So, That's how but it I, started. So, yeah. So, um, uh, I had a I, I had to hire an airplane to to go up to um, was it uh, uh, way up north? Uh, I can't even remember the name. My some of my memory is gone, you know. Most of it's there. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, so I ended up having to hire a plane and uh, go up to um, uh, up north. And while I was there in court, uh, this man I'm not going to demean him in my in my talk. Uh, uh, the judge said to him, oh, he said if, if, if Miss Shanker spills on that lot, she'll obscure the uh, view for the people <laughs> up on Vista Del Mar. That's, Can you believe that? That's Wait, absurd. I know it. And the judge says, well, boy, he's, you're really stretching it now. And so he gave me permission, and I called back down home to my builder, and by the time I came back on the airplane, uh, he was already grading the lot. I love it. Uh huh. You know, yeah. you since you've been here in '58, you've watched the city grow, change, expand both yeah. ways, north and south, east and west. And I'm thinking about all, just from my perspective, all the positive good that you have done. Yeah. You've given to so many people, encouraged people to do better. Yeah. Your legacy just keeps on going and going and going. If you had to be remembered for just one thing, what would you like to be remembered for? Well, I, I'd like to be remembered for one thing for the Centennial magazine that I produ wrote and produced in, uh, well, in 1956. Now what color no, was No, no, 1966. Was that the one that's, is it have an orange cover? Yeah. I own one. You own one, uh-huh. I mean, this thing is like, it, and you produced this whole thing. Uh-huh, and it, I wrote, uh, I, I sold all the advertising for it. I wrote most of the copy for it. 
and the city tried to stop it. Why? It was a, a private industry, a, a private business, and they wanted to produce their own magazine and make the money. They Looks like they haven't changed, right? Right. Yeah. Nothing's changed about the city trying right. to do that. No. Now, uh. Now the city is lauding you, okay? Uh, now they're honoring you. Yeah, well. And I'm certainly glad tonight's happening because you're finally going to get the recognition you deserve well, to have all these years. Well, to be frank about it, I never uh, expected any recognition. I was just doing what I wanted to do, and it made me feel good. And uh, I, I, I served on the, uh, the uh, board at the college. Right. And I gave scholarships to many a student. In fact, it's un, not common, or it is common that when I'm walking down the street, that somebody will come up and and shake my hand and thank me for helping their child, their son or daughter, uh, with a scholarship. Doesn't that feel so, good? Yeah. So I did all that. So when you look back at it, I mean, uh, that's you, you've done. You know, I would consider you a pioneer in the city of Ventura, even well, though you're not like original no. farm stock. But you have left an indelible mark oh, on this yeah. town. And I think Absolutely. a lot of it's to do with the arts, and now it's the uh, museum. Yeah, well, I, that one year I got the awards, uh, uh, arts award from the city. And I, I have, I have a, a pile of honors. I've had it from the senators and from this and that and the other one for some of the stuff I've done. And in 1998, I was called to Washington, D.C for a nationwide recognition of my support of the uh, community college. They, you deserve that. Yeah, You've given yeah, so yeah, much to them. 1998, that Didn't was. You, just, you weren't just recently, you were involved with the rebuilding and remodeling of the theater at Ventura College, correct? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's you. Yeah, in fact, they've That's named, your name. <laughs> they've named the theater after me, the Helen Yonker. Well, they should. Uh-huh. And then uh, the, uh, um, uh, what's in the, uh, Little theater down on the. Uh, oh, the Rubicon. Rubicon. That theater is named after me too. See, yeah. look what you have done. Yeah. Would you ever have thought about this? Never. When I when I read my own biography, and uh, the St. John's Hospital is uh, uh, was endowed by me to do their uh, rec they recognized that I gave them an endowment to rebuild or add on to the hospital. Yeah. That's St. John's. I'll tell you, Helen, you're uh, amazing. Well, I was in no other word. Yeah, well, I was I, I was uh, good uh, uh, out there for health and uh, for um, um, just the the needs of that came over my desk. And yeah, I never, but you acted on them. Well, that's Helen. That's, that's, that's it. the difference. Yeah. There's a lot of people uh, that will die with money and never right. really do anything for anyone yeah. else. Well, but I, you've always done that. Yeah. Well, you've um, always given back. I've always given back. Yeah. My my theme was throw enough bread on the water and it'll come back to you tenfold. Yeah. I don't think I could embellish on that anymore, uh -huh. and that might be a good place to stop. Uh -huh. Helen, thank uh -huh. you for being a part of Ventura yeah. and being part of the legacy of Ventura, and I'm so right. proud to have been well, asked to interview you and to be well, your friend all these years. Well, I hope there are people out there that pick up the, uh, the sword and uh, you know, uh, get together to save this. Uh, we will. Uh, wonderful museum. We will. I um, guarantee you we'll take it over and we'll yeah. keep it going. Yeah. But we're honoring you tonight, which is a very yeah. big deal. And I want other people to join me in honoring the museum and keeping it alive. I'll work yeah, on we that. Gotta think. Imagine they put all this uh, beauty and stuff together, you know, and people have to appreciate it. It's, and it's to actually, keep it alive. Yeah, it's actually a county thing, but I, I thought, uh, uh, why are they needing some money, you know? Right. Be, uh, I didn't realize that they, they don't get much support from the government. Well, no, the no. feds, the federal government doesn't give them a lot of money. The state no. doesn't give them a lot of money. No. Most of the money that keeps this operation going is local based right. donations. donations. And if it wouldn't be for people like you uh, stepping up to the plate, it wouldn't happen. Well, I hope everybody realizes that, that this is not a fun thing exactly. It has a, you know, everything has a purpose. We're going to continue you know, your legacy. Okay, that's I, a promise. I, I hope everybody will. You know me. Yeah, and I'm I'm doing I'm giving them a goodly 
donation now because I don't want to wait till I till for them to get it until I die. No, you want to see it. They, for, you know, yeah, you want to see I want to see now. some re results to it now. And I know everybody wants to join me in, in doing will. this. We will they, make sure it continues. Yeah. Okay, fine. Thanks for being yeah. here. And happy birthday. Well, thank you. It, it was actually the third, but the... That's the, okay. We'll celebrate uh -huh. today. Yeah, too. I don't mind doing more, more celebration, you know. In fact, I like my wine a little bit. <laughs> there you go. But it's not root beer and vodka today. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody who's talked to me for more than about 15 minutes understands how important I think collections are in this ever increasingly digital age we need to remember that you can't scan it if you don't have it sometimes that subtlety eludes us so you say i'm bullish about historical materials and you say well that's great and i'm thinking who doesn't agree with that who doesn't agree with books and maps and photographs and Chumash artifacts and furniture and animals? Who could forget our two-headed lamb? <laughs> who, indeed? Our condor, fine art, painting, etchings. That's just the short list. Who doesn't like that? The fact is, everyone likes that. But when the room gets quiet is when you start talking about Who's going to take care of it? And how they're going to take care of it? And how they're going to shelve it? And how they're going to air condition it? And how they're going to conserve it? And how they're going to, to observe best practices? This is where the room gets very quiet. So besides the importance of having an, a collection, you have to have people that appreciate and support that collection. And every so often, but not often, and this is true, someone steps forward to really make a difference, to really care for the collection, preservation, conservation, and exhibition of materials. This is the hardest thing, one of the hardest things I think to raise funds for. We are here today, among other things, to honor someone who steps forward and is that very special kind of person, Helen Yonker, to take the step forward and meaningfully support the preservation of our collection into the next century. This is not a small thing. So it is my distinct honor to thank personally thank Helen Yonker for her ongoing support of the collection and exhibition of this collection as we move into the next century. Thank you very much. It is not a party without the trademark marked song, Happy Birthday to You, band. And it's not a Helen M. Yonker party without a big band providing the backup to happy birthday for you. Oh, here's all the money. Okay, all right. I'll just, I'll just, where should I? I'll go over here. Okay. <laughs> not only because of my age, but all the wonderful friends I've made in my life that I couldn't do without. <clears throat> so I want to, you to applaud yourselves. Uh, uh, another thing, I never thought I'd be old enough to be in a museum, <laughs> but apparently I made it. And the reason I'm here today is that you never know when you get to uh, 95 whether it's the last time you'll visit the museum 
uh, or whatever else, you know, and, and the reason I uh, uh, am doing what I'm doing is I want to see this wonderful institution. I hate to call it an institution, but, but anyhow, um, I was in, in, in dire straits, and uh, I want to help them while I'm still alive. And of course, we, as I say, we never know how soon. And you know why time goes so fast when you get old? Because it's all downhill. Uh -huh. <laughs> and and when, I, when you come over and say hello, I feel very embarrassed. I want you to know that I, I don't recognize your face because my eyesight uh, is not good but it's good enough to see you and love you and thank you. And I don't know what else to say, but uh, and to support me and my efforts to help the museum. Because uh, it, to be political, it draws a lot of tourists for one thing. Because how many cities in the, uh, around have such a, a wonderful establishment as this and such devoted people running it? So let's give them a high hand too. So, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, thank you. Isn't this wonderful though to be friendly like this and everybody happy? No, but nobody's fighting, and they're not, they're not appearing before the council and making my, you know. <laughs> you know, I think I've appeared before the council. Uh, uh, at least 115 times in my life, uh, and uh, I'm still not through with it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's wonderful when somebody comes up to me and on the street and they hug me or they take my hand and say, "We want to thank you for help helping our child or go, go to, or somebody go to college," because today our hope for the future is our our young people. And uh, we all have to get together and help them. And, and, and when you throw your bread out on the water, it comes back a hundredfold. And that's one of my favorite sayings, because uh, uh, when, when you're doing all these good things, you're never thinking about rewards. I mean, just the fact that you're able to do it is your reward. But uh, I don't know what else to say. I'm not the speaker I used to be. But, oh, okay, I'm, I'm kicking off the, um, uh, one of the main reasons we're all here tonight, because uh, I, I, I've had your support for so many years that it's something I expect. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a check here, um, if somebody had to write for me, because I write so badly anymore, that for $25,000. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm not asking you to, uh, well I am, but I'm not, to, to make a, a, a similar thing, but anything that you can cough up, except your food, of course, uh, <laughs> will be appreciated. Um, I don't know whether I should show my Say, tell my favorite saying as you get older, the golden years have come at last. The golden years can kiss my ass. Jim Monahan, who's been on council how many years? 39 years and counting. 39 years and counting. And I mean, this years. is. It'll be, 40, wow. it'll be 41 at the end of this term. That is amazing. That's I, the longest serving member on our council in the history of this town. Yeah, well, I know that. I, I, some people think in the state. It but could, is it yeah. in the state? I, I don't I, know. I, I haven't. Somebody should really. I'll look, look it up. It. I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah, that, because the town is, we just celebrated our 150th birthday, correct? Yes. Or is it anniversary? I never remember Same what thing. it is. Same thing. That's what I years. thought, too. 150 yeah. years. We'll right. leave it at that. 
so we're talking, we're tonight at Helen Yonker's 95th birthday party. How did, how and when did you meet Helen? Oh, that's a good question. I think when she was working as Helen Yonker Realty and wow. this is down on the uh, Pierpont area where she was a, a leader like you in making sure the community is developed in the right way. Correct. And all of the improvements you see on, on Pierpont Boulevard with the center dividers, right. the trees and oh. all. She's responsible for all that. She never told me that. Yes. Really? Yeah. Okay. And she's the one who got the lanes improved and actually got them exempt from uh, some of the issues that other houses were forced with when they were going through the, uh, um, um, what was it, the second units? Right. And she was the one responsible for that. She found the documents where the city said they couldn't find them. Where did she find them? In her, in her, in her archives. <laughs> She's got some pretty good stuff. Oh, yeah. Now, I remember reading a story, and she didn't tell me this, but I remember reading a story about her years ago, and you, as a born and raised here, would know. Would the lanes ever underwater? Oh, yeah. When did they flood? Oh, that was many, many years ago. That was in the, I think, early 30s. But they flooded. All the way, before the freeway was there, went all the way to the, buff, to the bottom of the bluff. Seriously? It, it covered, everything is the Keys, and everything is the Pierpont. Yeah, that covered that whole thing. It wasn't wow. just the lanes. Water took out all the houses. There used to be houses where the um, freeway is now. Right. Those were all lanes, just like they were on the, on the beach side. They came all the way to the bluff on this north side. And those houses stayed vacant forever. And they're all the same kind of concrete streets. And that's where we were in high school. We took our driver's training there. How you know, they, we had to set up the horses and we'd back, you know, parallel park and stop at stop signs and it was just a, a kind of a remote a deserted area that we and it was not considered a good area to live oh no way when they developed the keys the local people thought they were crazy because we've seen that underwater why would we want to buy a lot what a were lot? they going for what were houses going for in the keys no well, they were just selling the lots they weren't okay selling they houses. didn't sell so everybody built their own individual homes yes i did not know that yeah. either they were lots were selling for ten thousand dollars oh my god what, isn't that amazing? Some, well, I think they started out at 5 in the morning. They were selling by 10 in the afternoon. So people the, were anxious to get a, a home with a dock, you know. Oh, the the wow. locals weren't so sold on that idea. I would imagine probably not, but anybody that had enough foresight, like Helen, yeah. who invested down there. Oh, she invested a lot. She, she did a lot for the, especially the beach area. It's amazing when you think back. I mean, she said she got here, when did she tell me? She got here in 58, I believe she said. Mm, Something see, like that. Know. So when she came from Fresno, I mm. mean, yeah, I mean, you gotta do better than Fresno. Yeah. And she, made, <laughs> she came here from Fresno in 58, and in 58, this was pretty much rural. I mean, I think town stopped at, what, five points? Just about. Okay, so there was nothing east of the, like, months where it is on five points. Well, yeah, there was a there was a VNS gas station. We we thought it was <laughs> memory. <laughs> it was halfway to Oxnard. You know, the only thing they sold there were cigarettes and gasoline, and uh, they they had lines going both ways. Gasoline was nineteen cents a gallon. <laughs> I think cigarettes are like ten cents a pack or something. Oh my God! And they had these uh, electric motors that the people that owned the uh, station reminded me or told me these stories that they used to keep wet rags on the motors because they never shut down, they're pumping gas so much. No so kidding. they had to just soak rags in, in cold water and lay them over the motors to keep, to keep them, them cool. cool. Yeah. And that was a gas station where yeah. Muntz is? No. Oh, no. No, it's, it's probably about where, um, uh, where what you probably would call Lemon, uh, what is that, Lemon Grove? Lemon Grove, just down yeah. by the mall. Yeah. A little, so that was the end of town, basically. Yeah, no, that's, that was halfway to Oxnard. <laughs> Half, that was halfway to Oxnard. Yeah. Okay, so none of, the, none of the developments like mills or anything like that in Victoria was They were all ranches, that lemon was orchards. ranches. Yeah, okay. Dottie Pass, her husband developed most of that. Oh, I did not know that either. Yeah, he, he, was, he was a developer of Pass, Pass Construction. She was something. Yeah. I love that woman. She yeah. was just a riot. Yeah. And she, she gave a lot to the community. As your family, too. I mean, yeah. your family, your dad had a, was it a welding shop? Well, in construction. We did pipeline. And he, he was down on the avenue, correct? Still, yeah. So you're, you're really a West Sider at heart. Well, I was born and raised there. 
So yeah. on what street? Lewis. Lewis Street, okay. So I showed you that picture where we had the snow I day. loved it. <laughs> that was hysterical when you showed that to me the other day. I didn't even know it snowed here. I mean, that was something I never even heard 1949. of. 1949. So as a West Sider, and I mean because the town is now going through a, a lot of changes. Yeah. As, a city, as a city council person, you've seen how many people come and go. Lots. Wow, yeah. And I, so uh, my council members, I would say in the 50s maybe. Isn't that insane? Yeah, we several have passed on. Right? Yeah, some of them only served one term. You know, That's voters, true. Voters got them out after one term. True. Well, you have to be doing something right if you've been in there 39 years. <laughs> well, that's elected 10 times. That, that is, a, mm -hmm. that's Ten unheralded. 10 consecutive times. But it's, you know, I'm always, you are probably one of the most single sources of local history that I know because when I need a question answered, especially like West Side Jim, do you know mm -hmm. so and so? Do you know remember the history of this? You can bring it right up. Oh yeah. Because well, you you Just were like West Park. You know, my dad helped develop West Park. And I saw the little sign. Yeah. I didn't even <laughs> see it until you pointed it out to me yeah. that that was the ball field. Yeah. So did you play at West Park when you were a kid? Well, yeah, of course. We, well, not when we were kids. Later, uh, I, I sponsored. You know, they have a league softball league where you okay. play ball with my company then sponsored teams for many years both men and women softball fast pitch you know volleyball you, you name it uh, we sponsored everything that we could for the for the city league but my dad was involved with the oil businesses when the, the people who worked at, at the time um, most all of the people on the west side in town had a member, family member in the oil business here in Ventura. Right, because that was the big industry. And that's why we have our school colors at Ventura High School's black gold. I you, didn't know that. You know what black gold is? Yeah, oil. oil. Yes. Well, uh, reference <laughs> to the Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah, <laughs> Who would have known it? <laughs> well, we came up with the uh, mascot, the cougar. Our class was class of 53. We were the first class in the separation from the high school and the college. You and know, so I've got a question I've never asked you in all yeah. these years I've known you. When you look back and reflect back at your single most accomplishment, your biggest accomplishment, when you look back at all these years, 39 years serving on council, can you identify one single, uh, singular mm. accomplishment that you are the most proud of? Well, I can say yes, but it didn't happen. I had worked on the committee to develop a university in Taylor Ranch in Ventura. I was mayor at the time. We had worked on it for many years and it was approved. And that was to be my shining accomplishment as mayor. And then as you know, that didn't happen because of certain... Uh, Individuals? Yes, council members. Let's put it that way. Okay, because that was the year I moved here. Oh, I see. And I went to City Hall and you didn't know me at the time. I was brand new in town. And when the vote came down that night, I was in council chambers and mm. I just sat there with my mouth open yeah. going, what did they do? They blew they this decided, golden opportunity. And they decided to put it somewhere else. That was, uh, I won't mention any name. No, you don't have to because we all remember. <laughs> okay. And they're still around. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> when they die, we'll talk about it. Right. <laughs> but I'll never forget that. I think that's the big, that's the, the most tragic event. Right that we so have ever seen. Things that stick out in my mind, you know. I, I don't would forget say it. The, uh, you say the uh, things that I do are to make uh, the city better. And one, one of them was to, uh, it took us 30 years to get the, the power poles down on the avenue. Right. Get all of the utilities underground. Correct. You know, what the avenue looks like today and what it looked like then. I right. Mean, it's beautiful. It's taken about another 25 years to get the streets resurfaced. As you know, it just happened. We got yes. the most beautiful streets in and the city. And you know I was complaining about the bike lanes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, you're going to be working with me, and I'm so grateful yeah. to have your assistance and bringing back the West Side to mm. what it can be and it was at one time. What it it can be. happen, yeah. and it will be. Yes, yeah, and it will jobs. be. There's so many but jobs out there people don't even know. And I'm so grateful to you for educating me to that. Yeah. I'm going to be working with the businesses and with the, you mm. hand in hand and this will be your crowning glory when we bring back, and I call, you know, I've already got a name for it. I call it the West Side Renaissance. That's good. And nobody's going to steal that one, I, although I heard somebody utter that the other night. Really? A, a staff person, oh, unnamed, okay. 
and they're not going to steal that All because right. we're going to keep that as what the West Side has created. Now I don't care how it gets done. Now getting back to Helen. <laughs> yeah, back to Helen. <laughs> okay. What, well, is, yeah, what do you remember most? Well, the, the troubles that she had with the city, because I was her number one backer when she was having uh, the issues with the slide next yep, to her house. I remember it. And uh, my feeling all the time was exactly in, in concert with what Helen was asking for. I agree, too. It was city property. The city should have went in there and fixed it. I agree. And we wouldn't have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on attorneys. Litigating. Yeah, and she had hundreds of thousands, and both sides had to go through so much trouble yep. to get it. And it's still not really finished. It's better. And it's, it's not going to be a... Uh, um, she, her house is not going to fall off the hill now. No, but it could have been... Pre all of this could have prevented... Well, she did have about 10 foot of property that she owned on that side of the house. And now it's just straight down. I remember that yeah. house. I, yeah. And then I remember her turtles. You know, she raises turtles under that I house. know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember them underneath, yeah, the pilings. Yeah. I remember that. When a turtle gets out, I think all the neighbors know where it came from. Yeah, exactly, because she <laughs> had the turtles. Well, I want to thank you for today. I think we are just about lost all our time. Okay. Thanks for doing what you have for our city. Okay. Well, thank you. Oh, Appreciate no, you the got no hugs. Give okay. me a hug. Look who you have brought together. I look out at this group and I see art, I see music, I see dance, I see history, I see drama, and we're all here because of Helen Younger. Helen, you are a treasure to this community and we at the museum are so thrilled that we've had the opportunity to host this very special day. So thank you, thank you all. My name is Betsy Chess, and I'm the development director for the museum, so I'm really happy to get this check. Thank you. <laughs> and in a few minutes, I'm going to invite you to come over to the museum, and we will dedicate the Helen M. Yonker alcove. It is spectacular. Part of the alcove is that it is, begins in the inside, but then through the window, you will see this absolutely spectacular mural created for us by Ryan Carr. Ryan, are you here? There he is. This gift and the alcove is the kickoff, it is the beginning of the reimagining of your museum. You'll see right now, most of our galleries are closed. We invite you to come back, we'll give you a sneak peek. When we open in January, you will see your museum reimagined. And we're so thrilled that you're here on this first step of our journey. So before you, well, I guess we're gonna have to have cake and eat it quickly, because we can't take cake over to the museum, right? Okay, forget that. Okay, good, good. So we have a cake for Helen to cut, and then there are cake pops. So get your cake pops, and follow Helen and me and the museum staff as we go over and dedicate the Helen Yonker alcove. Thank you.